Hey folks, it's Shane and thanks for taking the time to watch the Scout 75 channel. Recently, I was a guest on the Red Summit RF's bi-weekly live feed and the topic for that live feed was QRP radios. Now myself and several others did a quick presentation on the QRP radios that they used and I want to take the time in this video to go through my presentation a little bit slower. I was nervous during that uh, live feed, not to mention there are quite a few other people presenting we're on our time crunch. So I went through that thing pretty quick. So let's go over it one more time. Now the radio that I have for QRP is this Zygu or Shigu X5105. And uh, I bought this because it seemed to be a good fit for my needs. And let's go through that really quickly. A little backstory. I got into uh, some that's on the air kind of by accident, and it's not a very popular activity in my area. I live in northern Wisconsin. Wisconsin has a total of 42 summits. The highest point value is six points, and they're spread out quite a ways. So it's it's not a lot of people are into it. So I didn't have any people to check out their QRP rigs with. So I kind of did all my research online. And what I was looking for was something that was pretty affordable, a good entry level point to get into because I didn't know what I was getting into. And I wanted it to be uh, pretty simple in use and definitely capable of voice uh, single sideband. I have a general license, but I have no experience with digital modes, modes, digital modes or CW, so I wanted something that could definitely do sideband. But I also want those capabilities in case I ever get into it because I'm probably going to grow in this hobby. So having not to replace gear all the time would be kind of handy. And of course, since I do backpacking and everything with, with the summits on the air, something that was compact and relatively lightweight would be ideal. And this fit the bill quite well. As uh, far as price-wise, it's like $550 in that range at the time of this recording. It's pretty small, as you can see. It has everything you want in it. It's the, the transceiver itself, which functions great. It's uh, 5 watts, all the HF frequencies plus 6 meters, and it's very solidly built. It's all solid aluminum construction. I don't worry about dropping this on a rock. And, destroying it. It's pretty rugged. A little heavy, but that kind of goes with the territory. And the best features for this is the built-in battery and tuner. Uh, I like it's all one package like this. Less components to forget or drop or lose. Wires, cables, all that kind of stuff. Everything is all compact right here. As you can see in the picture above me, that is my basic QRP kit everything that I need. I have the radio itself. You see above it in that mesh pocket, there's the, the mic and the coax. And above that is my random wire antenna with the throw line attached to it. So it all fits in this bag right here. The radio itself fits in the main pocket, nice and snug. Above it, there's two other pockets where I have a power cable and some connectors. And again, the mic, the coax, the antenna. It all rolls up into a package about the size of a football. It weighs about three pounds, so it's very nice and handy. Moving on. So on the radio itself, like I said, it's, it's a nice straightforward design. Uh, the user interface is nice and simple. Uh, all the controls are right where they should be. Uh, the controls themselves, the VFO knob, it, it moves nice and smooth. It has a little deep detents as it kind of clicks into a position, so it has a nice tactile feel. Same thing with a lot of the buttons, especially the buttons on the top surface, which is going to be all your view. It has a nice tactile response when you click on it. It makes a clicking noise, so that's pretty cool. And all the buttons and everything are nice and low profile. There's not a lot to snag on any wires or pulling all your pack or anything so it's nice and sleek. Uh, the battery, like I mentioned, it's all internal. You get a long time out of this battery. I've gotten several activations about having to recharge it. And it will also uh, run off a 
auxiliary battery if you want to, external. I typically carry along this little BioNO 3 amp hour battery. It takes up a little space. This will run that thing all day as well. The tuner, as I mentioned, is excellent. I usually use a random wire antenna with a 9 to 1 to unend on it. And this thing tunes up on all bands every time. Very, very pleased with that. Another nice little feature of this is it has an SWR scanner on it. I've used that kind of as an antenna analyzer to, uh, to uh, help me build a couple antennas I've built, some dipole antennas to tune them into the frequencies that I use. So that's pretty cool. And also as a front firing speaker, uh, it's not the biggest speaker, but I can set this thing up and hear very well without headphones or anything, so that's pretty cool as well. So, in summary, uh, the Zygu 5105 is pretty relatively inexpensive entry point into a portable radio if you want to try QRP, summits on the air, parks on the air, that type of thing. It has everything that you need uh, with a decent transceiver, uh, has some nice filters, noise blanker, all that kind of stuff. Built-in battery and tuner, as I said, it's all you need in one little package. Pretty cool. And even if you're not into soda and quota, if you're kind of the prepper type for MCOMs, this would be a great little HF receiver to have. It is rugged, inexpensive. Again, it's pretty straightforward, easy to use. It'd be a great little kit you can put together at a go bag or keep in the trunk of your car for emergency reasons. You, know, you can do wind link, JSL, or JS8 call, set up an NVES antenna. Nice little setup for the prepared as well. My only complaints, and they are minor, is I would like if this BNC connector for the antenna was a little better protected. It kind of hangs out. And that's the only thing that really snags on this thing. Super nitpicking here, but instead of the barrel connector for power, I'd like to have Anderson power poles. Uh, I like that on all radios. If we just all go to a standard Anderson power poles. And my last complaint is that the battery is slow to charge. It takes a long time to charge this thing. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you're going out on, on a backpacking trip or something. You're going to do multiple summit on the airs or what have you, make sure you bring a power source with the back this thing up. So with that, I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.